The seventh International African AIDS Conference held in Yaoundé, Cameroon. Here, the emphasis is almost exclusively on controlling AIDS by controlling the sexual spread of HIV. The conference attracted over 2,000 delegates from all over the world. Although AIDS was first diagnosed in the United States in the early 80s, many still look to Africa for the origin of the disease, blaming the African green monkey and African sexual practices. But as more is understood about the disease, the Western model of AIDS seems to have less and less in common with AIDS in Africa. In the West, 90% of its victims are male. In Africa, nearly half of the diagnosed cases are women. Blaming Africa for AIDS caused puzzlement at first, and then outright anger amongst many Africans. There were many, many examples, but uh, one example is that uh, uh, Africans gave their children dead monkeys to play with as toys. And uh, there was all this nonsense about uh, how promiscuous Africans were than and other humans. I mean, I could go on and on, I mean, uh, and that uh, Africans believed that uh, the only cure for AIDS was to sleep with virgins, and this is why AIDS was so widespread in Africa. Most of them were all based on racism or, or racist preconceptions of Africans. The allegations really that Africans were more promiscuous than the rest of the human race were unfounded. Uh, they didn't make any sense scientifically. Um, in fact, when they sent teams of researchers, sociologists, anthropologists, Africa, uh, they were amazed that uh, Africans were actually much more conservative in their sexual practices. A focal point of the conference was the need to change sexual practices and how to encourage the use of condoms. Okay, you see there's a tank. This is a tank where the sperm will, will remain after ejaculation. You hold like this, and gently it goes down. Make sure this one, you press the, the tank, gently, and there it is. Cameroon Conference was a grand affair, drawing together all the national and international dignitaries of the AIDS round. But behind the scenes, a French charity worker called Philippe Crenan was photocopying his protest pamphlets down the road. Pamphlets critical of the AIDS hype he has experienced in Africa. He's angry at the way exaggerated figures for the prevalence of HIV in his area of Tanzania are causing distress and even death in his communities. So he decided to test an entire village and called a press conference here in Cameroon to announce the results. And we got a whole village coming forward to volunteer to know, to know what? To know if they were going to die. What is important is to see that these declared aid cases of deaths have not increased in this village particularly since two years. to visit Philippe across the Ugandan border into the Kagera region of Tanzania.
is waiting for us across the border. He is director of Partage, a French charity that supports, through individual sponsorship, orphan children in this remote region. Orphan in this part of Africa means a person Hello. under 18 <coughs> How who nice has lost one or both parents. It Sam can Alonso. also refer to children with special needs. Philippe travels constantly and has noticed that the number of so-called AIDS deaths is diminishing in this area. We see that the casualties because of AIDS with the diseases which are called AIDS here, which are similar to the symptoms of AIDS, they are less and less since now two years. Philippe and his wife Eveline have based themselves in Bukoba, a once prosperous town on the edge of Lake Victoria, that has fallen out of political favor over the years and is suffering increasing poverty and neglect. Here, Partage provides medical care, schooling and support to children in 15 villages spread over a vast region spanning over a thousand square miles. So great has been the fear of AIDS in this community that Philippe has found it difficult to generate community support for the orphan children. How can you ask people who believe they are going to die tomorrow, how can you ask them to look into the future which are the children? They give up. They don't invest. They don't want to come to work in northern Kagera because they think they are going to die of AIDS or to contract it. HIV awareness campaigns have been particularly successful in this region, leading most people to believe they could be infected. Philippe decided to get at the facts. First, he asked all of his 160 workers if they'd volunteer for confirmed HIV tests. He found 5% were positive. Then a whole village of 842 people volunteered. He found 13.8% were positive. These figures are higher than estimates for the number of HIV positives in the West, which are less than 1%, but substantially lower than previous estimates for this region of Tanzania. It is the first time in Africa that a village has volunteered as a whole to be tested for a dreadful disease, that everybody has got its results, and that the truth has been five times lower than the figures given by the World Health Organization of the age control programs. Rebuilding the shattered confidence and morale in this region has required dedicated follow-up. Lucy is an orphan who was working as one of Philippe's trainees. She became ill with repeated infections and lost over 20 pounds in weight. Most people thought she had AIDS. <laughs> Philippe discovered that Lucy had been diagnosed as HIV positive in an unconfirmed screening test. He and his wife decided to support Lucy and help her regain her position in the community. They moved her out of her small hut and built a new house for her. Slowly, in four or five months' time, Lucy started to recover, to put weight supplemented with vitamins, supplemented with food, with a better salary. And because she had put weight again and she had been freed of her skin diseases, her friends started to look at her a bit differently. Not uh, uh, putting her on the side and not being afraid of her because they started to question if really she had AIDS or not. It's very seldom you see people who have been stigmatized with AIDS who are not dying a few months later. So Lucy was one of the first persons who, because we didn't support the AIDS tag on her, recovered and was the proof to the community that you can recover for, from such episodes. <laughs> In three successive tests, Lucy has now been found to be HIV negative. 
She's just one example of the mass of flawed HIV statistics that bedevil Africa. Her unconfirmed screening test would have been included in the official reported figures for HIV positives. Some of these tests are so non-specific that 80%, 90% of the positives that are picked up are in fact false positives. They're reacting to antibodies that are not HIV specific. And when one realizes that these tests are being uh, pushed in a context in which we have to test as many people as possible, the inevitable outcome is that Africa, the, the figures for uh, numbers of HIV infections in Africa will become wildly exaggerated and feed into a very, very deadly self-fulfilling prophecy. According to official figures, over a period of eight years in the United States, there's been a relatively stable estimate of one million HIV-positive people. The total number of reported AIDS cases is 250,000. In sub-Saharan Africa, as testing has increased, the estimated HIV-positive total has risen to six million people, six times the U.S. figures. But the total number of reported AIDS cases is only 129,000, half the U.S. figure. The disparity between HIV and AIDS here and in the West is dramatic, but the single most obvious fact about AIDS and HIV statistics in Africa is that they're unreliable and virtually useless in charting the course of African AIDS. HIV figures are flawed because the tests are unreliable, giving too many false positives, and identifying AIDS through the Bangui case definition by looking for a combination of several symptoms is also flawed because so many other diseases get swept into the net. Does the African experience of AIDS help our understanding of AIDS in the West? One who thinks it the does is molecular biologist Professor Peter Duesberg. He has argued for six years that HIV is not the cause of AIDS. In leading science journals, he develops his view that HIV is no more than a passenger or hitchhiker that's around like other bugs when people are at risk, a bug that's dormant rather than fatal. And he points to one anomaly in particular in Africa statistics that he believes supports his theory. More than 2,000 documented cases of AIDS without HIV. Many of these cases came from Dr. Kevin de Kock's studies in Abidjan's three main hospitals. There, over one-third of cases not qualifying as AIDS, under the Bangui definition of symptoms, were HIV positive, And one-third of the cases which did qualify as AIDS were HIV negative. How does Dr. de Kock explain the cases in his study which have been diagnosed as AIDS cases but when tested have been found not to have HIV? If we're talking about AIDS, we should perhaps scrap that word and talk about HIV disease, all right? It's very clear what is HIV disease. Now, it is not surprising that the constellation of symptoms, signs, and indeed opportunistic infections occasionally, occasionally occur in people without HIV infection. There are thousands of documented cases from the third world, from Africa in, in particular, of clinically reportable AIDS in which HIV testing has been done and found to be negative. So I think it's uh, amongst the strongest arguments that HIV is uh, irrelevant to the development of AIDS in at least uh, some cases, if not all cases. Dr. de Kock maintains that those HIV negative cases may have looked like AIDS but they were simply similar conditions which were drawn into the net when collecting numbers of patients for research purposes, not for patient care. These 2,400 cases were called AIDS for all intents and purposes in all the literature. And yet you're saying they shouldn't have been called AIDS, but they were identical to, to AIDS. So are but they you were saying HIV there negative. Have been 2,400 misdiagnoses? Are we talking about, so we're talking about the quality of surveillance data? Well, then they're not AIDS cases. They're not AIDS in the way we talk about HIV disease. But they were called AIDS in the documents. In, in, they were called clinical case definition Bungie AIDS. Mm. Do you see? Of course I see. Um, any case definition, particularly one which is clinically based, is not going to be perfect. When one has clinically identical pictures, 
one with HIV antibodies, one with eight out HIV antibodies, to call one AIDS and one not AIDS is patent absurdity. This is irrefutable proof that HIV is not necessary for the presence of AIDS, except by definition. In Uganda, the external debt now stands at $570 million. The interest payments on these debts amount to twice the total annual health budget, which is about half of 1% of the gross domestic product. There's a crying need to call on health funding from outside. The trouble is HIV prevention is swallowing most of it up. In 1992, Uganda's total budget for malaria treatment and control was less than $57,000, yet foreign funding for AIDS was over $6 million. However well-intentioned, AIDS funders also have their own agendas. The American government's aid agency, USAID's genuine desire to help prevent the spread of HIV by funding counseling and condom distribution coincides with its declared interest in population control. Its investment in HIV prevention is huge. In the next five years, AID plans to devote um, hopefully as much as $400 million for prevention activities worldwide. Uh, much of that will go to Africa to help develop larger, more comprehensive and integrated programs that we hope will be able to show to the world that you can make an impact on um, behavior change and we can make an impact on slowing down the spread of HIV transmission. There has been some strong criticism that USAID's policy in Africa of distributing condoms suits USAID's policy for population control and this is worrying some African spokespeople. What is your view? Well, AID has always had a very strong emphasis on population, um, but condoms have never been the um, contraceptive of choice for population programs. And so popu uh, condom use in population programs has not been particularly successful. We have about more than 700 non-government organizations operating in the AIDS field in Uganda. This raises a lot of concern because a few of them are doing a very good job, but a good number of them, uh, my ministry is not aware of what uh, they are actually doing. And uh, there is no way of evaluating them. Unfortunately, a good number of them do rush in, collect data, and go away with it. And the next we hear about it is when it is being printed in uh, journals, and we have not had any input. And some of this work has been done in very limited areas, not reflecting the rest of the country. At Mulago Hospital, senior lecturer Dr. David Sawada is not at all happy with the way research projects have been conducted in Uganda, and in 1990 published his criticisms of Western researchers in The Lancet. I'm concerned about who is setting the priority to the main results, who the implications of the results, how applicable are they, or how relevant they are to our environment, and three, uh, the training of during the course of this execution of the research, a training to train the local individual so that at the end of the research, there is some local manpower that is trained to be able to carry on independent research. Dr. Sawada has told us he keeps an open mind as to whether HIV is the cause of AIDS and is conducting his own research in the Rakai district with a team from Molago Hospital. Contrary to previous reports, he's found a lower than expected incidence of HIV at 12.6%, almost the same as Philippe Crenan's findings in the neighboring region of Tanzania. Another of his projects involves following up 100 discordant couples where one partner is HIV positive and the other negative. The results of this study so far shows that in only five pairs have both individuals become positive. Um, this was a pleasant uh, surprise because I, I, we had expected a much higher uh, uh, seroconversion 
Which means? Which means uh, both couples becoming positive over a two-year period. If HIV were one day found not to be the cause of AIDS, then the consequences for Africa and Africans of following the HIV hypothesis would have been grave indeed. What keeps a man energetic and keeps him doing what he does is the hope for the future. But once you told me, you tell me that I am HIV positive, then you have given me this message that you are going to die, and therefore I have no energy for the future. In spite of everything, life and love goes on in Uganda. And even those who believe HIV does play a role in AIDS have strong messages of hope for the future. You see, the majority of our people here are children who are below the age of 19. Uh, below the age of 19, and these are more than 50 percent, and they are all negative. Most of them are negative. If you look at the seropositivity uh, incidence, uh, the prevalence of AIDS cases here in this country, uh, which supposedly is the worst hit, you'll find that not more than 6% of the general population is affected. Now, 6% leaves 94% of the population completely uh, able to perform what should have been done by the rest of the population. So I don't think AIDS really in the long run will completely mutilate and disintegrate Africa.